Hey guys, um, today I'm going to be doing a short tutorial on the knitted fingerless gloves that are knit flat. And I'm using a worsted weight yarn today. I'm using Red Heart Super Saver because the person that's going to that's gonna get these gloves is a dude. And I don't know if that person separates their laundry and takes care of their woolens and stuff so I'm not going to invest wool in a project like that. So and this black is some retro yarn. It is the special value 68 cent 100% acrylic fiesta yarn. I don't know who used to make this yarn, but yeah, it's uh, hmm, six eight cent a same. Well, you know, it's probably from like the 70s <laughs> and or 80s. And then I also have I'm using size four knitting needles, and I also have size four uh, DPNs to do the um thumb with. So you're going to need DPNs and you're going to need your flat, um, your straight knit, knit, yeah, straight knitting needles. You could do these in the round, but that's not the purpose. The purpose of doing these is to learn how to, is to knit them flat. So I'm going to start with black. And you're going to cast on 32 stitches using your favorite cast on method. Um, this is going to be going around the wrist and you're going to be doing a 2 by 2 rib. So you might want to use a cast on method that isn't very restrictive. Um, you, won't, you don't want this to be too tight going over the wrist. Okay, so I'll find my end. All right, good. Okay. There's a knot on the energy, so I want to just snip that off real quick. Okay. I need the scissors over here. I'm trying. I apologize in advance. I don't have much room. So step one, cast on 32 stitches. I'm going to be using the long tail cast on method. And I like having... Uh, enough yarn left over that if I want to sew um, with my darning needle when you finish it that I can use that to um, for my seam to seam with so I'm using long tail cast on you use the method that you prefer I don't have much room here so you know do 32 stitches so it's four Okay, and then you just kind of straighten them out and go back and count just to make sure you have enough stitches. So I have 32 stitches. Alright, so you want to then 
turn your needle make sure you have your working yarn which is your yarn is attached to your yarn ball and you're going to do a knit to purl to um, rib across you should always end with purl to and you're going to do that for two inches so I'm going to show you guys what you're going to be doing real quick um, So basically, you're going to do two inches of ribbing, uh, knit two, purl two. And this is going to be the wrist area. This is what's going to go from, from here to here. Okay? Then we're going to do increase rows right here. And you're going to do one increase on the right side and then you're going to do one increase on the left side and you're going to do this for three rows so one two three you have three rows of increases and that will give you 38 stitches you're starting with 32 stitches so after you do your increase rows you'll have three increases on each side once you get up here when you get, do your um, after you finish and you have your 38 stitches the rest of the pattern is a one by one rib you're gonna knit one purl one and you should end with the purl one for the rest of the mitten however long you want it to be if you want it to go over your fingertips, then you're probably going to be um, knitting anywhere from from 9 to 10. Well, let me see. I don't have, well, yes, I do. So, me, from here, to here is about two inches okay to once you do your increases your increase is probably gonna be like a quarter inch about that much because it's like three rows so from there if you want to go over your fingertips I would need about seven and a half inches to fold it back over the top of all my fingertips. If you're a person who wants your fingerless glove to end like right at your pinky, then you need to knit five inches of one by one rib. And these are some of the measurements that you can take so you'll know about how much you need for your glove. Um, I also know that once I get ready to seam up my glove, I know that I need to open, um, start, leave a gap, start leaving my gap for my thumb around four and a half inches so when I go back from this direction or if I go up from this direction then I need to leave for my thumb I need about four and a half inches where I need to leave for, for my thumb gusset and um, I'll show you guys that once we get to that point but it's a very simple pattern I mean that's you can't get any simpler than that the hardest part of this pattern is actually if you don't like to sew which I don't like to do is actually seaming it up so um so go ahead and and get your knitting done i really it, it's really don't need a step by step it's just a super simple very simple pattern um so we've cast on and you're going to knit I, I knit continental style and I, I also knit a little awkwardly compared to some people so it's i don't the way i knit it might not be the way you knit, so don't even worry about that. Um, I crocheted first, and I'm naturally left-handed, so I had to find a way that worked for me, um, which is more of a lever style of knitting, but because my hands are so freaking big, I don't get the speed that some people can get with your knitting. Crochet, so that's knit two, pro two, knit two, so that pro two is... Um, it's a lot easier for me to do to crochet quickly. I move that yarn out of the way. Getting on my nerves. So just knit two purl two until you have two inches. It looks 
like it's going to be too wide right now, but it's not. It's going to um, scrunch up. It will scrunch up as the ribbon gets tighter. And you can see that on this glove right here. You see how as it, it gets tighter, it scrunches up some. And so it'll look, it's going to look like that which is basically the diagram that I drew for you guys telling you what, what to do um, so yeah so just do that do you see this two knit two pro two knit two pro two and then we're going back to knit two so you're just going to do this all the way across for two inches Okay, I'm gonna and I'll show you guys about the seaming. Okay. So when you get ready to seam, remember like I said, I left a long tail um at the top. So I was coming down with this one seaming from the top. This is very, very stretchy. Okay. This is almost like a one size fits all type of pattern. So when you come down to the top, you want to line up your um, seam here. And you want to try and keep it even and go into your um, opposite side. I really don't feel that good today. And um, I don't know if I'm coming down with something. Okay, and just pull it tight as you go, and then you just go back the other direction. And from time to time, you want to stop and see where your thumb is. Okay? So from time to time, you're going to do a little test to see about where your thumb is um, in respect to your gloves. And my gloves, I want them to be about there. Okay, and you see how I'm what I'm saying is it's a very stretchy pattern. So I still need to seam about an inch or so right here for mine. So I'm gonna keep seaming. And then once you finish seaming and you got your thumb where you want it and you see gaps um, along your seam line, all you have to do is just take some of the excess yarn and go back along your seam line again. That's all you have to do to close up those gaps. And by um, seaming it this way, you don't end up with this this huge uh, ridge seam. Okay. Okay, so this is where I need to start. Basically, I'm just going to stitch around to this point here. Basically, it's where your increase is at. You're going to stitch around. You're going to stitch around on one side, and then you're going to join them at the, at the 
here you see what this where your increase row goes off at an angle so when you put your glove together this is where you're going to join you're just going to stitch around on one side not both of them together because then you close up the glove you're just going to take and you're going to stitch around one side to get your yarn where you need it to be make sure you pull that a little tighter from where you had your hand in there checking on your, your location and um, so you're just going to stitch around there Um, not be difficult. Come on, yarn. This yarn wants to act sticky today, and I'm not sure why. I don't know what happened here. It's not wanting to behave. And pull this from time to time just to even those stitches out make sure you're not pulling too tight so they don't pucker when you're going down to that spot okay so now I'm at this angle here and so now I can start seaming it back together again and you can seam it all the way to the end So I'm going to seam the nail all the way to the end of the glove. Alright, so we're at the end, so we're gonna put another one in there. Okay. Alright, and so the glove is seamed up, and so now you're gonna test it out again. And it's a little tight for me. 
but like I said, it's very stretchy. It's like almost like a one size fit all, fits all. And you can see where the seam is. You can't really, you can't really see where the seam is. But um, these stitches now around the thumb, you're gonna pick these up. Um, I use the crochet hook, and I did a nice seam around the crochet with the crochet hook to pick up these stitches or if you're one of those persons who likes to thumb out like that then you can have a thumb out like that. But like I said this pattern is pretty much almost a one size fits all because of the stitches you use and it makes it real stretchy. And um, this is wool so it'll retain its shape well and it's um so now you're gonna take your crochet hook and you have this extra uh, yarn. What I did was I just basically went up along my seam and if you have a wider wrist then you want to do more stitches right here um so I probably would have been better off doing 40 stitches at my beginning you want to use even an even count so you end up with purl 2 at the end each time it just makes it easier when you turn your work you start, always start with a knit 2 so um, I probably would have been better off using but it's still really stretchy so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my um, yarn. I'm going to find my seam. Because when you seam it, it looks almost like it's part of this uh, knit too right here. So I'm just going to take I'm just going to follow along the edge of this seam back up to my thumb gusset. And I'm going to use this excess yarn in that thumb gusset. To do those stitches that I want, I need to do. I just want to get my yarn back up here so that I can use it. Make sure you stretch out those stitches. You don't want it to pucker and stuff. You see how I'm stretching out? It's kind of spreading my seam right there. So, hold on a minute. It might not let me. Let me see what that looks like when I put it on. Okay. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. I can, I can just take this and just go back through. Make sure it's not. This is just some easy ways to fix stuff. <laughs> so you take and run it, run your yarn through, and you're not doing it in a tight way. You're just doing it loosely. You're basically you're weaving is what you're doing. You're just weaving yarn through the gaps to kind of close up those gaps. Gaps that once you wash this nobody will probably even be able to see it anyway. And since they're for me, they don't gotta be perfect. And um this is one way to close up any gaps that you don't want to have. See now you can't see the gaps. And because I stayed inside of the stitches it will be hard for someone to come up in there and say well look at all those gaps you got. So let me get this yarn back up here where I needed it. Okay so now it's up here where I need it to be so I'm going to take my darning needle out and take my glove back off. And it's not too tight. It's it's actually nice and snug. I don't have to worry about it moving around or sliding up and down and stuff. It's um and these I can spread my fingers out nice. If I don't want my fingers covered up, that's the reason I like it long like this glove is I can fold it back. Just like that. And I got more, you know, more of my fingers mo mobility or whatever. 
but I like to be able to cover up my fingers like if I'm outside in the garden in the winter time cleaning stuff up I can you know I can cover up my fingertips and stuff um, so okay so let me take it off and get my hair needles and my crochet hook the crochet hook I'm using is you can use which one you prefer this is a size 6 or a G hook and so I, what I do is I take and be going this way around and I use my crochet hook I just go under the top stitch and pull up a loop okay and I do a single crochet or a chain one and you just you're just gonna go through there and you're gonna do half double crochets no single crochets so you're just gonna pick up stitches and do single crochets all the way around what this does is it makes a nice even um, base for your thumb gusset now if you want it to you could do a crochet um, thumb you could just keep doing your single crochets all the way around and do a crochet thumb if you want it to but um, I do this so that when I pick it up with the needles it will be I can pick up uh, you know nice it loops nicely and evenly and it'll look nice Okay, so just do that all the way around. And when you get to this corner, you might want to put two in the corners. So I'm going to do two single crochets in the corners. Because you want to make sure you have that you're not making this hole smaller. And then when I get to the other side of the corner, I'm putting two over here. So I just did like a double increase right there around that corner. And then I just keep doing the one around. Because you don't want this hole to get smaller. You want this, you want your thumb gusset hole to, to stay a nice size so that it won't be too tight on your finger. And this is also a way for you to use some of that if you had an extra long tail to use some of that yarn up. Okay, so I'm getting almost at the beginning of this where I started at. Alright, so this is um the corner at the bottom. Um, I don't think I need to do an extra one so because I don't want a gap here so I'm going up under there pulling this up and now I'm back where I began so you're going to do a slip stitch here okay and you're going to chain up one and now you're going to get your needles out because now it's time to, to pick up these stitches you take your hook out and I still have a fair amount of leftover yarn but I don't want to run out and I don't want to have to do a join with this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ball of yarn that I knit my gloves with and I'm going to use it for my thumb gusset okay and I'm going to do I'm going to join them now I don't want to wait until it gets too short and I can't use it and this is what I do for my gloves you make sure that knot is nice and tight and as small as you can get it and you pull it from both ends and that makes that knot nice and you can just weave in these ends right here 
easily. So you get your needle out. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick up this outside loop where you did your crochet. You're going to pick that one up, yarn over, and pull a loop up. See, that hole looks too big. If that hole looks too big, then pick up the inside loop, yarn over, and pull it up a loop. And you're going to do that all the way around. Because you can run a thread through there, or once you wash your gloves, you could, um, it'll, it'll, these gaps kind of close up. But if you do it from the inside loop, it'll leave a ridge under there. That's why I like to do it from the outside loop, because it makes it nice and neat. So you take and you pick it up, yarn over, pull up that outside loop from where you did your crochet chain around. And that'll leave you, make it real nice and neat. See? It looks like the crochet, it looks like the the knit stitches are just continuing that continuing naturally that direction. Um one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna put eight. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see. Let me count these real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So there's like sixteen left. So let me see. So I'm gonna put six on each needle, and if I have an extra left over, so be it. So that's 22 stitches, okay, total. So you just when you want to change it, just get another needle and you do the same thing. You just pick pick up that loop, yarn over, and pull it through. You can put six stitches on this as well. That's four. And six. So we get our next needle. You can do the same thing. I like using four needles. There are people who rather use three, so you divide them among your needles, to, you know, to suit yourself. Um, I like four. And I'm going to pick up an extra stitch here because I don't want there to be a gap. So I'm going to come up under here and pick up this stitch as well. So there's going to be seven on my last needle. And because this part of the glove is done in a one by one rib, I'm going to do my thumb gusset in a one by one rib. So I'm going to knit one pearl one all the way around. And I'm going to do that until my thumb is as long as I want it to be my so you're just going to knit one pearl one all the way around and you're just going to do that until your thumb is the way the length you want it to be now you can also 
do shaping if you want to. You can decrease as the thumb goes up towards your knuckle if you want to. But that, that's your preference um, for your glove. That's you making the glove your own. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, pearls, that's it. Okay, so I'm right. Pearl one. Yeah. Okay. And you want to try and make sure that you are starting and stopping <laughs> at the right place. You can use a stitch marker so that you know when you come around. When you come around. So we started here because this is the bottom. So we started right here. So whenever you come around, you'll know, okay, I'm, I've started a new round. So this is your first new. So it was a little big, so I'm just going to have to finagle. Let me see what I need to do. I'm just going to pull this up, put it on this needle. Okay. So that was pearl, knit, pearl. This should have been a pearl. Okay. Okay, and this is the knit pearl. All right, so we're gonna you're gonna have to just keep going around to get it as long as you want. The thing about using the 4D pins is that I like is I can do this, so I can try on my glove and see how much further I need to go from my thumb gusset. You can you can try on your glove as you go. You can also see if it's loose enough, like you want it, and if it's loose like you want it, like what I would do for my thumb is I would start doing a decrease in one of these corners over here, or I could do the decrease here and make it go along my thumb this way. If you don't want it to be seen, you can do your decrease on the back side of your thumb over here. Um, just to make it a little bit snugger for your finger okay but that's it that's the basic work flat fingerless gloves uh, the hardest thing you're gonna do is put the thumb up there um, and that's not hard at all if you if you've knitting around with DPNs before um, so I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial I know it's not like in depth and everything like that but this isn't a hard project this is probably one of the easiest things I've ever done.